I'm so glad that I absolutely loved Insidious The Last Key. This is the fourth Insidious film. This was released in 2018, directed by Adam Robitel, written by Lee Wanell, and stars, of course, Lin Shay as Elise. And the character development in this is amazing, not just for Elise, but even for characters introduced in this. The, the journey we go on with some of those characters and the things we learn, just absolutely incredible, wonderfully written. The only thing that annoys me is that it's not called Chapter 4. I know that's a really weird thing to get annoyed about, but it doesn't make sense that Chapter 2 wasn't a prequel, but it's called Chapter 2. Chapter 3 was a prequel. It's called Chapter 3. This is also a prequel, and this one actually takes us back initially as far back as Elisa's childhood, which I thought was wonderful. And we learn about what her life was like growing up, and I think the casting there was great. And it was definitely a really, really brutal start to the film. And then it cuts to, well, not present day, but uh, slightly more present day. We're still a prequel compared to the first film. And Elise has a reason to go back to that childhood home and face the demons that were there in her childhood. And I don't actually want to say too much more about that because I don't want to give away more than I need to. But I think it's a really, really great story. It would have made more sense if this had been chapter three. So we went as far back as her childhood in the first prequel, and then in the second prequel, we go a little bit further forward, but we're still before the first film, if that makes sense. So I don't love what they've done with this, both the naming of the films and the order in which they've been released. So as a series, Insidious is just all over the place, coupled with the fact that at the end of C at the end of chapter two, we were introduced to characters that still haven't made an appearance. They've not done a really good job at constructing this world, but as a film on its own, but with knowledge of Elise as a character, I really enjoyed it. So if you're watching the films, in order of release. I'd actually say watch one, two, four, and then three. Just personal preference. Um, I feel like it would have made more sense if you're going to do a series of prequels to at least do the prequels in chronological order. Um, that would have made a lot more sense. And also calling this chapter four. Otherwise, why would you have a sequel and a prequel called... Ch I'm, I'm not going to go keep going on about it. I'm sure you know what I mean. There are small petty things to be annoyed about. But the whole point is, as a series, Insidious is a bit of a mess. But as a film on its own, The Last Key is wonderful. So the story is brilliant. The characters are great. Obviously, giving Specs and Tucker, it makes more sense that this film is the fourth one because of their relationship having already been established. So that kind of makes sense. But I still just think going as far back as Elisa's childhood would have made sense as the film before this one. But never mind. The fact that we go back to her childhood home is great. Um, the pacing is really good to the point where so much happens. We got to what what turned out to be an hour and 10 minutes in. And I thought, wow, so much has happened. This film must be over soon because it's packed a lot in. And I, you know, I checked the time and it, I still had like, I think, half an hour left. And that half an hour is still packed with a lot of action, a lot of well, a lot of horror, some really wonderful character developments, and a few things that I definitely hadn't expected. Very well-constructed narrative. And in terms of being scary, I'd say it's not as scary. In fact, I'd say out of the four so far, this is maybe the least scary, maybe on par with the first film. I just feel like it didn't have as many jump scares, and... While I'm generally not a fan of jump scares, I prefer psychological, dark, twisted horror. I think Insidious does jump scares very, very well. So I actually love the jump scares in Insidious, and this one just didn't have that many. But the sound effects, contrastingly, were abundantly eerie. Absolutely loved that. So that worked very well. It is creepy, of course it is. But I don't think it is as scary as two or three uh, and probably on par with one but it was still a, a thrilling experience great casting of course wonderful wonderful character development and I absolutely adored it and I'm really glad because when I watched Insidious 1 I kind of thought this is not as good as I had expected I don't know if I'll continue watching these and then as I've gone on with 2, 3 and 4 
I've really adored the entire experience and now I have to decide whether I'm willing to pay £16 to rent Insidious 5. I started watching all of these because I wanted to see the new one and I knew it was available for streaming but it, it didn't occur to me that it's currently quite expensive. Um, so part of me thinks I should wait until the price comes down but I don't think I can. I'm hooked. It took more than the first film to hook me but it did it. I'm finally there. I can now call myself proudly an Insidious fan. As a series, the structure of the films, not that great. I feel like it's a bit of a mess. The inconsistencies with the titles, that doesn't make any sense. But taking each film in turn and enjoying the journey with Elise has been pretty wonderful. And if I had to rank them so far, I'd have a very difficult time doing that actually. It's either 4321 or 4231. But we'll see what happens with the fifth film. I'm probably going to just rent it at full price because I'm kind of desperate to see it. Looking forward to it. Really glad Insidious improved over time. And uh, yeah, this one was maybe not as scary as some of the others but a very very well written story a really well executed narrative and one that i truly enjoyed <laughs>